Frontal boundary rolled through the area last night, brought showers and thunderstorms. Now we're on the cool side, but it won't last long. We'll track that coming up. The family of a Lexington woman killed in the terrorist attacks in Brussels talks about how she and her husband are being remembered. And a constable charged in a deadly shooting in southern Kentucky was back in court. You'll hear from the victim's fiance ahead. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good afternoon to you. I'm Amber Philpot reporting. The U.S. Capitol Police are telling staff in the Capitol complex to shelter in place after a report of gunshots being fired in the Capitol Visitor Center. CBS News has learned a male shooter was taken into custody after he was shot by Capitol Police. The White House also was put on lockdown because of the report. The situation was apparently contained to just the Visitor Center, but no other information was immediately available. We will update you on this story when we receive more information. Turning to weather now, we are starting the week with some cooler temperatures, but there is a warm up on the way for us. Take a look. This is a live picture now of downtown Lexington, and it is all part of a roller coaster week of weather. Let's check in now with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. Seems like it's that time of year, Jim. And it's been like that for the past several weeks. We'll get these nice warm ups, and then a big cold shot will arrive. Warm up, cold shot. And we're going to do it again this week. We're going to have the warm up and another cool one toward the end of it. But we'll let's enjoy the pleasant side of it. It is beautiful out there. We have the clouds trying their best to break up. If we had that all day long, we would be dealing with much warmer temperatures. We're in the mid 50s right now, but we had a chance to get even warmer than that. Now we're kind of on the uh, downside of things here. Winds coming in around 17 miles per hour, as far as uh, some of the gusts are concerned. 55, as I mentioned in Lexington, there you see those scattered clouds. 54 down the road into Richmond, where the clouds are thicker in Covington, Maysville. That's where you're finding those low 50s. So with the clouds thick, less sunshine making its way through, they are on the cooler side of things, but really not that bad. Let's take you through the evening here. I think uh, once we start to where the sun starts to set here in the next few hours, between the 7 and 8 o'clock hours, we're talking about 48 degrees. So we get on the chilly side. Then overnight, you see the skies are clear and temperatures hover in the mid-30s. And then we get into the day tomorrow. And that's where we find the first part of our warm-up. We're in the upper 50s, close to 60 degrees. We go beyond that, we get close to 70 again. I will track that and that other cool down coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Jim, we'll see you in just a bit. Thank you. They are trying to heal their heartache. The family of a Lexington native killed in Brussels in Tuesday's terror attacks got word late Saturday that Stephanie Schultz and her husband Justin were among those killed by a suicide bomber inside the Brussels airport. WKYT's Kristen Kennedy is at the live desk for us with the latest from Stephanie's family here in Lexington. She has our top story at four. Kristen? Amber Stephanie's aunt Betty Newsom said today Stephanie's parents haven't yet made their way back to the bluegrass. They're not sure when they'll be able to bring Stephanie's body home. The 29 year old and her husband, 30 year old Justin Schultz, were saying goodbye to her mother in the Brussels airport when the explosions went off. Stephanie's mother was unable to find the pair in the aftermath. For days, she tried searching for them. Her family confirmed news of their deaths Saturday. The president called their family this weekend to express his condolences and to tell them Stephanie and Justin epitomized all that is good about America. Newsom told us in an interview yesterday she is grateful they now know what happened. Uncertainty is terrible. And if not knowing for longer would have given them back to us, then let's go on not knowing. But if this was going to be the ultimate end, then let's let's get this part done let the healing start the wonderful memories come out right now the family doesn't have any uh, funeral arrangements set at the live desk kristen kennedy wkyt Kristen, thank you. Belgian authorities say three more people are being held on charges of participating in terrorist activities following more than a dozen raids over the weekend. Craig Polcott has more from Brussels, Belgium. Belgian authorities continue their investigation into the terror attacks in Brussels. Four more arrests over the weekend following more than a dozen raids. Three of those suspects now being held on charges of aiding terrorist groups. And this morning, Prosecutors releasing footage of one of the main suspects, showing the man wearing a white coat and hat pulled over his forehead, pushing a trolley through the airport the day of the bombing. Authorities in Europe and the U.S. bracing for the possibility of more attacks in the near future.
You look at places like, like Belgium, France, Germany, Turkey, uh, other parts, those are, those are areas, I think, with high populations that uh, have to be concerned about more attacks. Secretary of State Kerry just back from a trip to Belgium, now looking for a long-term solution to keep the West safe from terrorists who may have slipped into Europe, disguised as refugees. Everybody is now geared up to recognize that the fight is not just in Iraq and Syria, but the fight is wherever those fighters have come from. And here in Brussels, metro lines, which had been closed since the attacks, are slowly reopening. Some residents are happy to see life returning to normal, while others say it's too much, too soon. It is always the same in all countries. We tell authorities to pay attention, but nothing comes from it. Love each other, help each other, and don't give in to fear. Officials will be testing tomorrow whether the Brussels airport is capable of resuming passenger service. No word on when it will fully reopen. In Brussels, Greg Palcott. And tomorrow, 800 staff members at Brussels Airport will test new security measures for passenger check-in. The Belgian government must approve the new system before the airport can resume handling passenger traffic. Back here at home, a constable charged in a deadly shooting appeared before a judge this morning. Today's hearing for Laurel County Constable Bobby Joe Smith was rescheduled for April 25th. Smith's attorney says they're still waiting on lab work and toxicology results for Brandon Stanley. Smith is accused of shooting and killing Stanley while serving a warrant on him on March 4th. Smith's family and friends, as well as Stanley's fiance, were all present for today's hearing. <laughs> there was a lot going through my mind. A lot, how he could actually sit there with no emotion to his face. All his family was there supporting him for something he should be in jail for. Smith has pled not guilty. His attorney doesn't want to comment on the case until the next hearing. We'll have more from court ahead on WKYT News at 4.30. A Kentucky woman who was on the run for two years has been arrested in North Dakota. Eurelis Rios was wanted in Lexington for forgery and other charges. Police say she embezzled thousands of dollars from the apartment complex where she worked and filed false tax returns. Rios was brought back to Lexington where she is now awaiting a court date. We are working on a number of other stories for you on WKYT starting at 4.30. WKYT Sean Moody joins us now from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Hello, Sean. Hey there, Amber. An Eastern Kentucky man pleaded guilty today in a murder case. Christopher Payton is one of three people charged in the death of Randy Williams. Williams was found shot to death in his home in West Liberty back in 2014. His mother, Kimberly, and Michael Ferguson were also charged in this case. Coming up on WKYT News at 5, Find out how long Peyton will spend behind bars. A Johnson County man who died trying to save his grandmother during a flood is being considered for an award from the Carnegie Hero Fund Commission. The award recognizes those who risk their lives trying to save others. The commission's investigations manager said it could be several months before a decision is made. We will have reaction from Johnson County ahead on WKYT News at 6. And we have a traffic alert to let you know about the inbound and outbound left lanes of Versailles Road are closed today through tomorrow evening at New Circle Road. Then tonight at 7 o'clock, crews will close the right lane of the inner loop of the Circle to, New, to Versailles Road. And then at 10 o'clock tonight, the ramp from the inner loop of New Circle to Versailles Road will be closed. Work is continuing on a new flyover ramp there at that intersection. Also, another traffic note, this is spring break for Fayette County Schools. And that's a look at some of the news in progress. Amber, back to you. You have probably noticed gas prices are inching back up. For the first time in three months, the national average is above $2 a gallon. In Kentucky, the average is $1.99 a gallon. AAA says prices will likely go even higher as the price of crude oil rebounds. Apple is taking on Netflix with its own original television programming. A report in the New York Times says Apple is working with Will I Am and two TV executives on a non scripted series about apps. No word on when it will be released and how people will watch the show. Facebook is apologizing after many users mistakenly received a notification from its safety check feature asking if they were safe after this weekend's terror attack in Pakistan. Facebook says a bug caused the system to send that message to many people who were nowhere near Pakistan. 
The traditional desk is getting a new look. There's an emerging trend of workstations that are moving people away from the standard sitting position. Chris Martinez shows us one that takes the idea to a whole new level. This desk gives a whole new meaning to the expression, lying down on the job. Absolutely perfect. The alt workstation was designed for people who spend the majority of their day at their computer, like Eric Miller at the Nomont School of Visual Effects in Los Angeles. It's not uncommon to be at our desks, really on the box for 10 to 12 hours a day. Users can stand, sit, recline, and even fully lay down, all while continuing their work. The desk has a thin sheet of metal, and magnets are used to keep the keyboard, mouse, and other items attached to the desktop. The monitor is bolted on. Che Voigt is its creator. We wanted to make it at the press of a button. You can transform from one position to another without putting any mental energy into it. More and more office workers are getting away from sitting at desks. Standing workstations have become popular. Some even walk at work with a treadmill desk. And doctors say it's a good thing. A review in the Annals of Internal Medicine found sitting for prolonged periods of time increased the risk of cardiovascular disease by 14 percent, cancer by 13 percent, and nearly doubled the risk for diabetes. It's amazing. The alt work may improve your health, but it comes with a cost. The flexible desk will retail for $59 hundred dollars when it becomes available later this year. Don't be surprised to see more desks heading in this direction. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. And how about this? There's a town for sale. The asking price, just $8 million. Nancy Kidwell is selling the entire town of Cal Navarre, Nevada, located just 70 miles south of Las Vegas. Kidwell tried selling the 500 acres of land in 2010 for $17 million, but couldn't find any buyers. Now she's dropped the price and is including the town's diner, convenience store, 10 room motel, RV park, and the mile long airstrip. The town has a population of about 300. It is time now for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. Babies are getting fewer ear infections than they did in the 80s and 90s. That's according to research at the University of Texas. Doctors say more breastfeeding, less exposure to tobacco smoke, and a rise in vaccine use have contributed to the drop. To address growing numbers of chronically ill children and a shortage of specialists, the American Academy of Pediatrics wants to overhaul how graduate school medical education is funded. The AAP is recommending more money to train pediatric specialists and surgeons. Terminal cancer patients choosing to die at home may live longer. That's according to researchers in Japan who found that good hospice home care doesn't shorten life and may actually prolong survival. Federal regulators say rules on posting calorie content at restaurant chains will be delayed until next year. They were supposed to take effect at the end of this year. The rules, which were passed as part of the 2010 health care overhaul, require establishments with 20 or more locations to eventually post the calorie content of prepared food. The years of delays have come as supermarkets, convenience stores, and other retailers that are covered by the rules have fiercely lobbied against them. And if you've been looking for a reason to get a tattoo, here's a surprising benefit. Study results suggest getting several tattoos may boost your immune response. Researchers at the University of Alabama point out, though, getting a single tattoo can temporarily lower your resistance to catching a cold. It's like exercising when you're out of shape. But if you keep exercising, the body bounces back faster. Researchers say repeated tattooing might show similar benefits.